Hello everybody, hit pause here uh, with a quick tutorial on how to control your blendable post-process material effects uh, using something like the level blueprint. Okay, so what I've got here is uh, two volumes. One is a post-process volume, the other being a trigger volume. If I go inside the post-process volume, you can see that all I have is a tint. Uh, that is in fact all that this is doing. I'm not doing anything else. Maybe I'll kick up the saturation a notch or something. So yeah, it's a double saturated tint, okay? If I leave uh, the volume, okay? So even if I'm in the tr even if I'm in the trigger volume, I'm still in the post-process volume, okay? So no change there. So what I want to do is just create like a material warpy effect, something kind of generic for now. I don't want to go too crazy with that. I have a texture here, uh, which is called water wipe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new material here and I'm going to call this M screen I'll just call this water warp okay for now let's pop this guy open let's go ahead and pop this up here let me throw my texture in so I can drag this up here let go boom okay so first thing I need to turn this thing into a post-process effect so the material domain is actually going to be post-process and my camera is a little bit laggy or my mouse cursor is a little bit laggy here and what I'm gonna do is just pipe in the texture well not the texture sample I need to get a scene color or scene texture here okay now this scene texture is set to scene color and you can actually tell it to do a whole bunch of different stuff here you can say hey let me get the depth let me get the diffuse color specular color or the base color or how much metallic or what what not world normal which is actually quite nice because you can use that to align stuff um, but we'll go with scene color and let me just show you a problem coming right out of the box here so I'm going to apply that okay so it's pretty much not doing anything and it's not even assigned so with the post process volume selected uh, to assign this we go to miscellaneous blendables and we highlight my material here and we will pump that in. Now there's two things that you're going to notice here. Now I don't know if you can notice the one. Now obviously you can see that if I come out here that the lighting looks pretty even, kind of, you know, it's almost dull. And when I come in here, it gets really contrasty. Okay? And it, I don't know if you can tell, but it's also jittering around like a friggin' crackhead. Okay? This is like a meth heads view in the first night in prison right away from their delicious meth so to fix that the main problem is here near the bottom the post process material the blendable location after tone mapping uh, is not what we want we want before tone mapping okay so if I apply that it's officially not doing anything okay the the scene um, tint is happening why let's go to the post process line let's turn off the tint and the saturation <laughs> I had the saturation up okay so there's literally no difference now so I'm capturing what I see is what I get which is what we want right I mean I just all I'm doing is capturing the scene I'm not doing anything yet I want that to be exactly my scene and that is the case so before tone mapper try to remember that all right now what I'll do is I will take this and I'm going to warp it so I'm gonna do a panner here and I'll warp it in a let's say downward fashion so we'll just go negative one here now if I just attach this here this is gonna be entirely too strong I just want to display this just to give you guys an understanding of how this is going to affect. Okay, see, like, what's going on here? Like, I can hardly even tell anything anymore. You can see that I can kind of look at the tables and the chairs and the ground and stuff, but that's so strong that it's just, there's the table, there's the orange from the table. I can't use that. The reason is, is because this is like a full-blown one-to-one. This becomes the UV. This becomes the texture coordinate, and I don't want that. I want to add it to my texture coordinate. Uh, texture coordinate here. Now this will still be too strong, 
But now I am just pushing my texture coordinates to the side, basically. I did not mean to hit search. As opposed to replacing them. Okay, now what you can see is, like I can actually see the scene, right? I can see it there. And at some parts, I can even see where the scene is unaffected, where there's like white okay where it actually ends up pushing it back into the range of where it originally was okay so to control how warpy it is we're gonna multiply that by a strength parameter but here's the thing there's a uh, matinee cannot hook up to a specific object you can't have one matinee and then decide hey I want to add a different object to it later UE4 is actually a little this is like one of the few spots where UE4 is a little bit less uh, capable than UDK uh, just and the reason is is I'm not I'm not, I'm not squatting on UE4 because obviously it's a vastly superior in every way but uh, the reason is, is because they're getting ready to replace matinee so they're not really worried about it um, hopefully that happens somewhat soon, but yeah, it, it, it does for, for the matinee, you know, the mad matinee fans out there and you can see here as soon as I pop in, uh, it, it does, uh, you know, kind of, it threw me for a loop. I was like, wait a minute. I was doing these kinds of effects in UDK all the time using matinee to control the parameters, right? But you can't do that now because you can't tell matinee what the hell it's attached to. So in order to get around that, what they've added are under materials and textures there's a material parameter collection so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this water warp collection okay and in here I'm gonna add a scalar parameter and I'm gonna call this strength <laughs> strength not strength and we'll just go ahead with a default value of one for now okay and um, maybe we'll say 0.5. Okay, so we'll save that. Back in our material here, what we can do is if we type collection, here's a collection parameter, okay? And that already filled in what I wanted, but that's because I had it selected in my content browser when I did this, okay? So this is the uh, collection here. It's already pointing to the correct one. If it's not, like I said, you can always drop it down and pick, the, pick that there. And then it will actually see strength, strengthigus, <laughs> strengthigus. Okay, so we'll throw that in, and we'll pop that in our UVs now. Go ahead and close that down. Okay, now what you'll see is that as I edit this. I'm changing this, okay? Uh, it's going in the opposite direction. Uh, okay, I did this in the opposite order. I'm multiplying it after, so I'm increasing the warp. That is not uh, correct, okay? I actually need to do it like, um, like this, okay? So I multiply it, and then I add it. So that was just my own dumb fault. All right. So we pan it, we strengthen it down, however we want using the strength of the, and then we add that to the texture coordinate. And now, as I dial this back, okay. So 0 0.1, 0 0.01, barely affecting it. 0 0.2, 10. Right, obviously way too much. One, two. The, the higher I go here, the more it's going to be crazy. But point, maybe two. Point two would be probably the max I would ever say. Hey, that's fine. Okay. So if you're underwater or something, and you, I could control the pan speed if I wanted to with another parameter or something like that. But for now, we'll default it to point one, so we get just a, a basic amount of warp. Right. Now I want to control that. I want to have that stop warping when I go into my trigger volume, but I don't want it to just snap off like it does here. Okay, snaps on, snap off. Okay, I want it to come off over time. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want 
to let's see go ahead and close this it's doing it here so I'm gonna go to my level blueprint I'm gonna open my level blueprint okay I'm gonna get my post process volume well actually I'm gonna get my trigger volume and I'm gonna drag this up here okay and I'm gonna drag off of here and I'm gonna say begin on add on actor begin overlap okay now that's gonna replace that I'm also gonna do add on actor end overlap okay and now I can delete this I some reason I can't get this to show up unless I drag this in I I have that issue I, I don't maybe that's just me but I do have that issue now here's the other thing now, what I want to do is I want to control my actor my uh, overlap right so using my per, my parameters so what you do is you do set scalar parameter okay parameter value but here's the here's what threw me off I couldn't figure this out I thought it wasn't possible because it does not let you do this because it says function is hidden and inaccessible and that was throwing me for an absolutely insane loop so what you do is you do it here set scalar parameter what is it set scalar parameter value set okay see how nothing there uncheck context sensitive set scalar parameter value there it is few right p h e w few so the collection I only got one in my whole entire project so we'll pick that and you can see that it knows what the parameters are the strength here okay so on what I want to do is I want to interpret this over time so in order to do that I need a tick okay so event tick I need to know whether or not this is now I've already done this one time so there's the I can't uh, explain away why these are already here but they're, they're here because I did it one time and I kind of screwed it up so uh, I have just a boolean okay and I have a screen wipe strength here which is just a float variable uh, you can add variables by clicking that button there so we're gonna start off at 0.5 I think 0.5 is actually no, 0.1 we'll start off at 0.1 okay so screen screen wipe strength here will be 0.1 that's what it's gonna start at okay so what I want to do is uh, when I go into the volume I want to wipe it out okay so what I want to do is I want to I'm gonna go ahead and set that to true okay it doesn't really matter I should have called this actually enter volume okay so when I enter the when I enter the volume okay I want to set that to true and when I exit the volume I want to set that to false So what I want to do here is I want to check. So we'll get this guy. Hold B for branch, by the way, very handy. And I just want to check if this guy is true or not. Okay. If it is true, which means I've entered in there, is when I want to start doing this. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to get this, and I want to do a float interp. So F interp two. Okay. Now I need to get delta world seconds. Get the lotta. Get delta world seconds here, so I can feed that in. There's no real difference than just dragging this over here, but uh, doing uh, doing this over here, I feel is a little bit cleaner. Okay, I'm going to set my interp speed. We'll just set it to one right now. We want to actually interp it down to zero. Then we want to set our screen wipe strength okay so if it's true we're gonna do this and we want to set that value here to this guy okay when we come back we're gonna exit the volume but we also we want to set this back to point one. So if I leave that volume, it goes back to being on. Okay, so here I am in the volume. If I come out, you see over time it went away. 
Now if I come back in, okay, well, coming back in didn't work. The reason that it didn't, it did work, by the way, the reason that it didn't show, God, the reason that it didn't show is after I set that, I need to go ahead and update the collection. I need to update that, okay? So if I leave over time, dies down, go back in, it's an instantaneous draw, uh, goes back up and again, dies down over time, instantaneous comes back up. Now, just to show that we can go, god dang it, we can go both ways here, oh my, we're going to, um, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to set that. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to interpret back up. Okay, so if I'm in this volume, it's true. If I'm out of it, it's false. So if it's true, we're going to interp down to zero. If it's false, we're going to interp up to point 0.1. So come here, it dies down. Come in here, it builds back up. Here it dies down. Come in here, it builds back up. Okay, so now there's no automatic jump. Okay, I'm interping too. Let's exaggerate so we know it's happening. First off, I'm going to slow down the interp speed. Second off, I'm going to kick it up a notch. Bam! Okay. So it got stronger. It will die down. And then it goes much stronger. And it's not instantaneous. It's doing it over time. Let's exaggerate that a little bit more by slowing down the interp speed even more. So over time, it's actually going to interp up. Okay, let's get it. It wipes out pretty quick. Okay, with a speed of one. As I come in here, it's much slower, but it builds up. And then dies down. Okay. So again, the trick, material collection. That material collection is added, added into the material. Okay, used here. Okay, you can find them by typing in collection parameter. Okay, and then you can pick which collection you want to use. So you you can make multiples of these and have all kinds of different stuff. Then here, the main trick here is to not have anything selected. Type in set scalar parameter, or just type in set scalar, and make sure that context sensitive is not on and then you can get that and it will pop up and then you can officially pick your parameters selection and it will know what's what in the button. Okay? So that's it. That's all that's all there is to it. And I can pretty much delete this now. And again, this you, you can go as crazy as you want with the material obviously. Um, uh, my official material, you can see I'm only using the red channel. I've also got a green and a blue channel. Those are all blended together. I've got other different parameters that I'm wiping at different speeds so I can make it a little bit more convincing and all it's not just warping, you know, off and on. I've got some drips and things like that that are happening on the scene too. So, but you can go as crazy as you want on that or as simple as you want on that. And hopefully you guys found that interesting and um look for rats at the start of next year on Kickstarter and please help support that. I am going to try and port it over to UE4 and make it the most awesome game that in the universe that is uh basically themed on little rat soldiers in uh, a large world. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.